everyone, my name's Andrew, and this is Canadian Starships. Well, it's update number 18 on the Enterprise E project. It is Monday. I took the last week off building. It was my daughter's very first full week in junior kindergarten. So I took the week off building so I could focus in on her. But one of the great things about her being in school is that my Mondays, which are normally a day off, work for me. Uh, I get to now spend five hours of time during the day building. And that is a huge block of time for me to be able to put towards getting the work done on this project, which means we will hopefully start to see more progress during each update, which is really exciting. So I spent the whole evening last night doing a big cleanup on the studio. It just gets dirty over time or cluttered or various different things. So it just takes me a, a, a few hours every once in a while just to make sure everything is good to go. Uh, I wanted to make sure it was ready for a day of building. And a day of building is exactly what I've got in store for me today. It is Saucer Section Electronics Day Round 2. If you've been following the project, you'll know that I've already done the saucer once, but I was not happy with the way that it went together. And if I'm not happy with the way something has turned out, I will do it again. And in fact, I bought a second kit so that I could do it over again. I do not want to produce something that I am not going to be happy with, especially now that this is a client build. It's been purchased. Uh, so I want to make sure that I am giving the very best to the client. So saucer electronics, we're gonna to try to get uh, as much of the lighting done and sorted. I have to take a little bit of time just to, to re-evaluate what I've done previously and make sure that what I'm doing in the saucer works with what I did in the engineering section previously. So I'm gonna be working on that pretty much most of the day, except for a little bit of time uh, just after lunch when I'm heading downtown to pick up a really good deal I got on some uh, Star Trek model kits through the Facebook marketplace right here in our own city. I am getting four, uh, four non-started model kits and then I'm getting two kits that have been started or worked on which uh, will be fine for spare parts and stuff like that down the line. So uh, Voyager and a Romulan Bird of Prey are uh, have already had work done on them so those will be for spare parts or kit bash parts or different things like that but what I'm getting in as far as start kits that haven't been started is the 1350th NX01 Enterprise. I am getting a solid uh, non-clear Enterprise D. I am getting a Runabout and I am getting a Vorchaw class all for $100 Canadian which is a great deal. Um, even the the NX01 350 scale model is is worth more than that on its own. So I'm really excited to be picking that up. And before we get started on the electronics of the project today, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. We are doing very well on the channel. I am so pleased with how you have enjoyed these videos. So please, if you have enjoyed the series so far, hit that subscribe button today so you don't miss out on any other updates that are coming out. So let's get to the electronics of the Enterprise E project. So first up on electronics is going to be installing things that have already been stress test because I had them ready to go from the previous saucer section. So first up on that list is the impulse engine. So what I need to do is I need to clean up the impulse engine light boxes. I also need to touch up the paint on the back of the impulse engine lenses. Retest those, just double check that they're all good to go install that on the inside. The impulse engines are installed. You'll notice that they are nicely uh, frosted on the outside, red on the inside. I've got a red LED in both of those and I'm just gonna turn them on to give you an idea of what this thing looks like. And I, it shows up a little, maybe a, a little orange on camera, but that is a really nice red in person. And there's a bit of a, um, fade from top to bottom which I really like and I think it's gonna look really good once the photo etch parts are on. You'll also notice that the observation deck has been primed. It's just sitting on there at the moment. It's still got the toothpick on it that I use to uh, put it into foam while it's drying. 
I am going to go ahead and put the base color on this uh, so that once it's installed, I can just put um, a mask over the entire section here and uh, deal with uh, the masking that way when I'm painting the rest of the model. It's just going to make life a little easier for me. And I had mentioned in the last update that I was going to let my client decide what we were going to do about that observation deck window and what he has gone for is uh, the more canon look on it. So just to refresh your memory, the options were to go with a frosted window so it just looked like a lit up room inside or to have it just a clear glass so that you can see into the shuttle bay. Uh, but he wants it to be more of a room. And as part of the um, of the deal I got, I got these aftermarket Voyager decals and down at the bottom here, let me just see if I can get the camera to focus in on this well, you've got these, these window fillers and uh, something like this might be an interesting option to put in behind the observation deck window just to give it a little bit of extra life because if I put clear material like perfectly clear material in here with the um, kind of like the the decal on the back it might just give the illusion of an actual room back there so I'm gonna give that my best go so that uh, it looks as good as it can a little bit of context as to what this is here, which you are looking at. We have the painted with base color, just one coat, uh, the observation deck, which will go onto the back of the saucer section. Then down here, we have a piece of clear plastic. Let me just see if I can pick this up for you. A piece of clear plastic with a graphic of a lounge area on a decal adhered to the clear plastic. And uh, this is a piece of uh, transparent white lighting gel that it's currently sitting on. That's gonna be cut to fit the piece behind it. And this whole unit will then be mounted on the back side of this piece. And with the light behind it, what that's going to do is give the illusion of some sort of room in the observation deck. Now, it's not going to be super clear. It's really hard to get crisp, clear printing at this uh, size, but it's just going to give you the impression that there is a room in there with stuff going on. So uh, the decal is adhered onto the clear piece of plastic. I'm going to be cutting a piece of the white lighting gel to fit that, that's gonna be bonded to it. And then once uh, the second coat of this is done and I'm happy with, it, with the way that it looks, uh, it's going to be bonded to the back of the photo etch, which is on the inside of the observation deck part. So it's just a bit of figuring out kind of a way to do this. This is the approach that my client was really hoping to get on it to get a bit of a uh, graphic in there so that it looks like something's going on in the room. And I think uh, the way that this is looking, it's a little hard to see on camera, but I think it's just gonna accomplish that rather nicely. A couple things to show you. First of all, can you see the LEDs? Not sure where they are? Well, there's one right there and one right there. These are the Micro 0402 SMDs. They are tiny. They are great for these projects. What these ones are going to be for is for the shuttle bay, which is right here, which is the next thing I want to show you. Um, what I've got is the observation deck. It's not installed. It's just sitting there, but it has the base coat done. And it also has the window treatment inside. And uh, so if I put, I'm just going to put my cell phone light kind of underneath for the time being, just to give a little bit of a glow. There is a decal on there 
it's going to be hard to see on camera, I think. Let's see if I can focus in on it. But there's just enough going on there to make it look like there's a room inside. So what these LEDs over here are for, are for lighting up the shuttle bay and lighting up that observation deck. So if I just turn the LEDs on, now you can definitely see where those are. So this is just temporarily set up here on top of the Tamiya paint jars uh, so that I can run these LEDs overnight. I've just wired them up with resistors and I just have a, uh, a bit of a cheap <laughs> setup here just so that I can get the connector on it and run these LEDs overnight. I don't want to put anything into the model that I haven't allowed to run overnight so that I know that the LEDs are good. Generally, if they're going to fail, they'll fail within the first uh, few hours if there's a defect in the LED. Uh, some would call this burning in the LEDs. So I'm going to let those sit overnight before I install them into the kit to make sure that they are good to go. Just prepping to do a couple major things here. First of all, the shuttle bay is wired up and uh, it is ready to be installed permanently. So that's kind of an exciting moment. Also, I have 11 of the white 0402 SMDs that are going to be wired up to their resistors and they're going to be stress test for, to make sure that they don't fail. And these are all of the navigation, white navigation lights that are going to be going into the saucer and the secondary hall. And then I will need two red and two green of the same size LEDs um, for the side navigation lights. On each side, there is a... There is, uh, let's see, we're looking at here. There's a, well on this side, there's a green inboard and a white outboard that's on a strobe. And then it's the red on the other side. So I'm gonna be getting all of these ready to go. Well, this is some assembly line electronics going on here. And these paint jars have really come in handy to be basically extra holders for wires and stuff like that. So I just lined up all the wires, got all the resistors prepared, and they are just gone on bang, 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 bang down the line. So these are going to need to be tested overnight or longer to make sure that none of them burn out. This little bit of Frankenstein wiring is simply to test out the LEDs. Nothing would ever go into the model wired up like this. So if I turn on my bench power supply, these lights should all illuminate and doing a quick look, they all illuminate. And so these will be run for a good long time to make sure that they are uh, not going to fail. Shuttle bay is in place. I've epoxied it down. The clamps are on. It's going to cure overnight. The lights are going to uh, do their test overnight. And then once all of that's done, we're going to move on to getting the internal lighting um, and the nav lights installed into this thing. These 0402 SMDs are incredibly delicate, but I've got the forward white navigation lights installed and it's epoxied in place and uh, again as I mentioned these things are incredibly incredibly fragile so I have another one on the test bed right now going through its 24 hour um, test run so uh, yeah, I did break one. Uh, the SMD itself broke off of the wire, so I had to create a new one. But that's to be expected because the wiring is so incredibly fine at the solder points. Currently working on the general inside lighting, basically the lighting that's going to light up all of the windows inside the ship. I'm just working around all the spaghetti 
of the nav lights and stuff. So I've got the, uh, I've got a strip down the middle. I've got one down the side. They're only temporarily stuck in place with the sticky backing that's on the uh, backs of the strips. So everybody does this a little bit differently. So I thought I'd show you how I approach doing this. So I've got some standard LED tape here. It's a nice warm light without being too yellow. Um, this particular stuff is a little bit different because it's actually weatherproof. It's got a plastic coating over the top. So the first thing I'm going to do in this particular case is strip away a little bit of this coating, this weather protective coating, so that uh, I can access the, the solder points on the strip. So I'm just going to cut it away like so. Okay, and that is exposing the solder terminals here. So there's several different ways that you could do this. There are some clips that you can get, you can just solder onto this, but I like to try to make sure that this is as secure as possible. So pin vise, I'm going to drill through drill through each of the terminals and uh, you can see it goes all the way through doesn't take long I'm also doing this on a piece of wood so I'm not drilling into my my workbench or into my cutting mat. I'm going to cut a little bit of the backing off here. Now I've got a few things prepped. I've got two pieces of wire and I've got three different sizes of shrink wrap here. So you're going to see why that's important here in a moment. So I'm just going to mount this in my new mounting uh, helping hands get a little bit of solder I'm gonna drop a bit of solder on each of the terminal points now I just turned the soldering iron back on so it might not be quite hot enough that there we go just prepping the, these with a little bit of solder there we go Next up, I'm going to take the positive, which I'm denoting here as red, and I'm going to put a little bit of solder on this to prep it. There we go. Prep it for connection. Then, let me get this off of here. I'm going to feed it through the hole I made. I'm going to bend it, bend it back on itself here. Make sure it is nicely pinched closed. I'm just going to do that with my fingernails. If you don't have fingernails, you can use a little tiny um, pair of pliers or you can use your tweezers or anything like that. And I'm going to put, I'm going to get really close in here so I can see. A nice shiny drop of solder on there. Now I've got to repeat the process for the other one. So we have both sides of the wires nice and firmly soldered onto the posts of the LED strip. Now for a lot of people that would be good enough and it would be fairly strong, but I'm not quite happy with that. So the next thing I do is I take the very thin shrink wrap and I'm going to feed that onto each side and put it right up and any little bit of exposed wire on the bottom side is going to get tucked into that shrink wrap. And once that's properly on there, we get the heat gun out. 
and shrink it. So now that these have been shrunk down, I'm going to take this next size up and feed it through both. And I'm just going to put it as far in as I can without putting too much pressure on the two wires. And I'm going to heat shrink that again. And now I'm going to take the final largest piece of shrink wrap and put that over everything again. And this is the key piece of shrink wrap because it's going to actually, I'm going to squeeze it down and it's just the right size once it's squeezed down to fit over the end of the actual um, strip itself. So this is going to get shrunk down and that's going to be the piece that holds everything together. And so this is going to be a really firm um, put together piece of LED light strip and the chances of it failing because of um, error in putting it together are going to be so incredibly slim. And there we have it, a nice secured LED strip which will now be installed into the bottom section of the saucer section giving lots of light to those upper saucer windows. So that's pretty much all of the interior lighting of the saucer section sorted. I got a little bit more of those strip lights to install and I've got all of the wire management to take care of. But once that's all done, this thing can go together. So in the next update, that's what we're gonna be focusing on. Getting the saucer section put together, getting all that putty work done and hopefully getting most of the construction of the model done. Oh, by the way, Zach, I am standing right on that green line that we talked about earlier. Well, I hope that you've really liked this update. If you did, make sure that you hit that like button. If you're new to my channel or you haven't done so yet, why not hit that subscribe button today? You'll make me very happy if you do. But for now, my name's Andrew. This is Canadian Starships. Have a great day, everyone.